hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be making a fret saw table. Well, this project can be made either with power tools or with hand tools, your choice. I'm going to be using a mixture of both, kind of like the best of both worlds. It all starts off with some plywood and it also starts off with the design of the tabletop. Well, I have a piece of three quarter inch thick ply and this will be our tabletop. I need to mark the center of the circle and what that's going to be is at three and an eighth inches. This is going to be a six inch tabletop and the reason that I say that the center of that six inch tabletop the reason I say it's at three and an eighth is because I want to leave an eighth of an inch here at the end for cutting. So if I mark the center at three and an eighth and I mark another line right here at one eighth of an inch up, all I have to do is align my compass point, align my pencil with that mark and that will yield a six inch circle. I just want to mark a center line here as well just to make sure I know where I'm going here. So there's one, two, there's three inches for a six inch circle. And there is our center line. So we will set up our compass here and mark a six inch circle. Well, now that we have our circle drawn, we need to draw the back end of our table that will house the support to clamp it to our bench. So for that, I'm going to put a mark at one end at nine inches because we want it to have a three inch uh, back support piece here. And as well, we're just gonna turn this around here so that I can mark the other side. We'll mark the center of our circle here. There we go at three and an eighth, just like we did on this side. We want this to be a four inch wide platform here at this end. So what we're going to do is we're going to place a mark here, two inches outside of our center mark. Now this is pretty boxy and pretty ugly at the moment. So what we're going to do is I want to get a circle template and we're gonna round off these outside corners here and we're gonna round off these corners right here. Well now out from our center line here, I have come out half an inch on the outside of the circle and one eighth of an inch on the inside uh, and placed a mark. I'm now going to set my bevel here so that it lines up with both the bottom and the top mark. And once I'm happy with that, I'm just going to lock it down. And then all I have to do is line it up with one of the marks and draw my line. Then I'll turn this over and it's all about repeatability here now. And we will do the same thing on this side, just like that. All right, so there is our notch. And again, if we want to, we can round this off here just so that we don't have that really sharp notch. That might take a little bite if you were to jam your finger on it. Well, now that we have this done, it's time to cut a few dados. And what we need is we need a dado that is going to be the same thickness as our ply. We need one right across the back edge here, about one inch in from the end. And we need another one that we're going to have right here that is going to support a gusset for the table. And there is the mark for our dado right here. And right there. And this will be our other dado coming on the underside of our table. 
So now we need to know how long we want this gusset. I'm going to bring this gusset in at three and a half inches in from the edge of this cross piece here. So there's one, two, three and a half right there. And then that will provide support to our fret table. All right. So now our next step here is to cut out these dados. And for that, we're going to be doing it by hand. We're going to be using a router plane. And uh, our first step will be to score the lines of our dados before we can start cutting them out. And we'll just get our marking knife here. Mark the edge of this dado right to there and then we'll mark this edge of the dado by doing this it'll give a nice clean crisp line there at the top edge of our dado so it's kind of an important step so we'll continue here lining up all of these We'll do the long length here. Now, because this is going to go right through, I don't have to uh, score the short ends of this because we're actually going to go out beyond the perimeter of our table here. So there's one and then this one. All right. So now we can start chiseling this out and getting this uh, getting this ready. So you guys get the idea here. I'm going to continue hogging this out. I'm going to make the dados about half the thickness of our ply. And uh, when I get that done, I'll come back and see you. And once you're done with the dados, we can take it over to the drill press. We're going to drill a half inch through hole right here in the center of our table. And then we're going to take it over to the scroll saw and we're going to cut around that V-notch all the way around our table. The whole thing, we're going to cut it all out. This blade is feeling a little dull to me. I don't think it's reacting quite the way it should be to the wood. And, and that's the thing about scrolling guys are using a scroll saw. Some guys use these blades until they wouldn't cut hot butter. But if it's not cutting right, the blades are cheap. Don't ruin your project, just change the blade. Well, our next piece to make is the gusset. And for that, we need to measure here to here. And if you remember from before, that was three and a half inches. We'll just verify that. And yes, it's three and a half inches. So we're gonna mark on our piece of ply here, just another scrap. We're going to mark three and a half inches and this will be the width of our gusset. So let me just see that. There we go. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to measure the depth of your dado. And it doesn't matter if it's the same as mine, however deep you cut it, 
but you want to put a line at that mark. And once you get that done, you want to run a 45 degree angle from here, right here at this corner, all the way up. And that's where we're going to cut it. And that will be our gusset. Now you can cut this however you want. You can use hand tools. You can go back to the scroll saw. You can, whatever you like. I think I'm going to take it to the scroll saw and just cut that out quickly. Well, it's now time to drill the holes for our gusset. And I've marked a couple of holes here in our fret table or a fret saw table. And I'm just going to drill those through and dry fit our piece in. And we're going to screw it in using some number eight screws countersunk into our tabletop so that they lie nice and flush and uh, then we can glue and screw that gusset into place. And there is our gusset installed. Now there's only one piece left to make and that's the backer here. And for that, we're going to need more plywood again. We're going to cut it eight and a half inches long and we need it the same width as our back section of our table here. So that will be four inches. So let's cut a piece eight and a half long by four inches wide. Well, just like we did on all of our other sharp corners, we're going to use a template here and uh, inch and a quarter diameter template. And we're just going to round two of the ends. The other ones will be inside the dado of the fret saw table. So you don't need to round those ones, but these ones here will be exposed. I'm just going to take them over to the belt sander and just round them off. And now that that piece has been cut and sanded, we can just give it a little test fit to see how well it fits into place here. That's pretty tight in there. That's a good thing. All right. So the next step that this is all fitting well, and as long as you're happy with the way it's fitting, we're going to drill two holes here so that the upright can glue to the gusset as well, we're going to drill two holes here, one at this side and one at this side, so that our upright can be secured to our table. Well, essentially what you have created is a mini scroll saw and basically your saw will run in this little area here and the object here, this blade may be a little too coarse for this, but the object is to use this table as a support as you're cutting. So what I'm doing here is I am using the blade up and down almost like a like the arm of a scroll saw is being done by my right hand and my left hand I am carefully turning the piece however I want to do it in order to follow this line that I've cut. Now I've cut this little line here or I've drawn this line it doesn't mean anything it's just a silly little pattern to try and follow but this is what we're going to do and we're just going to carefully cut along here and you can see how the piece is very well supported now i would be the first to admit i am not the best uh person when it comes to using a, a fret saw i'm not very good at it but this table really helps with control. And the reason for that is it really supports the piece. 
Now, initially I was afraid that this saw was going to really dig in here and cut the living crap out of this, this little notch. But when you're running it like this or working it like this, you're not firing it through. So you have the ability to take your time and pay attention to what's happening. When it digs into the side of that table, you can really feel it. So you know that you're going off the mark. So let's just finish this cut here. And there we go. Not too bad for someone who's not very good at, <laughs> at a fret saw. But there you go guys. That's it. Fret saw support work table. And there you have it. A fret saw table. Guys, this is an excellent little project for anyone who's looking to try some hand done fret work and as well needs that extra support to help hold the piece. Normally, whenever I would use a fret saw, I'd put it in the vise and I'd be trying to cut it like this while trying to control it. I find that this little fret table really gives a lot more control. You have to go a lot slower, but what's wrong with that? You get better results with a fret saw when you go a little bit slower. You got to take your time. Now guys, this will work with both interior and exterior cuts. When I showed you the example or demonstrated how to use the table, I just cut a line, a crooked line that I scribbled out on the paper on the board. No big deal. But if I were to drill a blade entry hole, I could very easily feed that blade through given the design of the table, slide the whole thing in through that notch in the front, cut my interior piece, and then continue on with my other interior cuts. What did it take in material? Six screws and some scrap pieces of plywood left over from other projects. So, depending on what kind of a use you had for those scrap pieces of plywood, it was virtually made of stuff that you weren't going to use anyway, which makes it a fantastic scrap project. Anytime you can utilize scrap for something useful where it doesn't end up in the garbage or burned or whatever, it's a win-win situation. Guys, these are available commercially uh, at, at some of your woodworking suppliers, and they're not that expensive. I think they're something like $13 or $15, but I never even came close to that cost with the material that I used, and I had a blast doing it between the, the uh, router plane, doing the dados, and my little hand drill and stuff like that. This was a really fun project that only took a couple hours to do all in all, and that included filming. So you could really whip this off realistically in about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on your skill set and, you know, how much detail you want to put into it. Guys, you don't have to follow the dimensions that I have here. This one with the six inch table and the three inch overhang at the back, that sort of thing. It's just a suggestion. If you want a bigger table or you need more support for a bigger piece, build a bigger table. What's the big deal? If you don't have a hand or a router plane to do the dados by hand, don't do them by hand. Use a router. How's that? Use a router, use your table saw, use a regular blade in the table saw and nibble away at it. There's all kinds of ways that you can work around it. How about hand chisels? If you don't have any of that other stuff, you got to have a chisel, don't you? Figure it out. There's a different method that you could use and the stuff I do here on the show is just a suggestion. Guys, I want to thank you for tuning in. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click that bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. I hope you've enjoyed the content, guys. I hope you're going to try this one for yourself because it really is a worthwhile project. And more importantly, I hope you guys are going to join me next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.